Hello, and welcome to the Humumu Halloween Home Horror Hoedown. The podcast where we watch 31 horror movies throughout the hallowed month of October. Ranging from the critically acclaimed to film school projects gone gruesomely awry. And we take them all way too seriously. I'm your host, Mike Hummel. And I'm your host, Sully Hummel. Now warning, we use a ghoulish number of spoilers, so watch the movies first. Second warning, we don't know anything about anything, so don't take us seriously while we take these movies seriously. Are you ready to talk about Martyrs, the French movie from 2008, and Martyrs, the American movie from 2015? I'm pretty ready. Okay. And I think we're going to just intertwine the two of them because we're remake. Gonna, we're going to do this the blob style. The because, blob style. Because yeah. it is a remake. And so I feel like it's appropriate for us to just talk about both of them at the same time. And if you spoil one, you spoil the other because it really is a remake, even though it has some significant differences in the plot. I mean, yeah. So what you just said is... <laughs> An interesting sentence, but I, just I think, agree. I, I think yeah. anyone who doesn't want to be spoiled for either of these movies should go watch them first. Sure. And then come back. Yeah. And I'll just tell you, you should probably watch the French one. I mean, should they? Well, that is a question. Should they or should they not? It's not an easy watch okay, by so any means. Maybe we should have a brief conversation about that and then send them to go watch if they want to watch. Okay. So the French version of this movie is one of the most torture porny movies we've seen. Probably the most, I would say. Even more so than my favorite House of yes. a Thousand Corpses. Yes, definitely more than that. I more think. so than Goodnight Mommy. I would say that there was a bit in there that was so unpleasant I could not handle it. And there's less of that here, but this is... I mean, wouldn't you say there's 30 minutes of just continuous torture in this movie? I would definitely agree with that. And I think that there... That's just, like, the fourth act. Yeah. I think there is significant amounts of torture in earlier acts as well. But, like, one of my notes for the French version is... There is no dialogue in uh -huh. Act 4. It's just abusive beatings. Yeah. And not like the sneaky, off-camera, oh, we're going to use electricity and water kinds mm -hmm. of torture. It's straight up the main character getting pummeled by a very large, muscular man. Which is interesting you mention because they explicitly did that in the American version. They're like, we're doing torture too. And they electrocuted her. And that, yes, exactly. Like they pulled all the punches, mm -hmm. uh, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the American version. It was still torture -y. They were trying to have the same thing. But having watched the French version first, I was like, oh. Well, that's, There's nothing happening here. That was my problem. I was watching the American one and thinking, like, I can't judge what I'm watching at all. Right. Because I watched that other movie first. Like, maybe this is a super intense, hardcore movie. Doesn't seem like it. No. I had the same thought. I was wondering, like, okay, if we had watched the American version first, <laughs> would I be more horrified by what's going on? Because right now I am not at all horrified. I just keep comparing it to what happened in the other one. And, like, this is nothing. Yeah. Okay, so basically, for those people who are waiting to decide whether they should go watch <laughs> these movies or not before listening to the rest of this, if you have the stomach for, like, true authentic horror, like, violence horror, definitely, I would say, watch the French version. I think it is an interesting movie, but you have to have the stomach for it. Yeah, it's not easy to watch. If you don't like that sort of thing... <laughs> Maybe go watch the American version. Maybe. Or just, you know, or go, not. go watch or Friends. Or just listen to us. <laughs> yeah, listen to our <laughs> podcast and then watch Friends. Okay, I feel like that's enough prefacing. <laughs> yes. Welcome back, those of you who went to watch one or two of these movies. And are you guys okay? Yeah, are you... Uh, if you watch the French version, do you need anything? Do you want a hot, hot cocoa? Are you going to be able to sleep? Take care of yourselves. Okay, so now let's really talk about these movies. 
They are both the story of a girl, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years old, who escapes from her captors, who we do not know at the beginning, yeah. and, and ends up in an orphanage and is befriended. Uh, so the, the girl, Lucy, escapes from her captors and is befriended by Anna. And they grow up together, and then we jump forward 10 or 15 years, depending <laughs> on the movie. Yes. And Lucy is looking for the people who were torturing her. Because she's being haunted by, like, a monster who attacks her over and over and over again, and basically, like, her belief is that she's being attacked by this monster because she needs to go dispatch yeah. the people who did this to her. The movie just jumps right in after all that beginning stuff with her finding them. Lucy finds her captors, and as far as she thinks, and... Kills them all violently. Shotgun. And it is so much more violent in the French version than the American version. Just the sound of the shotgun was, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm like, don't we know guns in America? What's happening here? This It was so intense and dramatic in the French version. And it was just like, boo, boo in the American one. Well, I mean, I think that's twofold. I think we're desensitized to Amer guns in America. So like... They don't know how to make them <laughs> scary anymore because they're like, these things show up in high schools. Eh. Yeah, no big. Um, and also, they kind of, again, they pull the punches. Yes. They are afraid to go as far as they can because these things show up in high schools. Like, <laughs> it's both we're desensitized and we're that much more afraid of them, kind of all tangled up in one. Hmm. Yeah. The other thing about that particular scene in the French movie was that they spent a long time establishing that this was just a normal family having breakfast on a Sunday morning and the, yeah. the son and the daughter, like these high school kids are bickering and mom and dad are talking about their plans for the weekend. And it's just this long scene where you kind of get lulled into this comfortable family life and then dad opens the door because the doorbell rings and he gets blown away. Like, yep. like there's not one second for you to transition. And it's so shocking. Yes, it is very shocking. And in the American version, like, you can tell they were trying to do the same thing, but they didn't spend the time on it. They were too mm -mm. rushed. And so then I didn't really care about these people. But also... I knew what was going to happen to them. So maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why I didn't care about them. I don't know. It's a little hard to tell. They they throw in a little line in the American version where the dad is like to his son, I'm going to need your help in the basement later today, Yeah, which is a hint that I don't think happened in the French version. I don't remember it. And th it kind of changes things. And I think in the same way that they did with everything in the American mm -hmm. version, it makes Lucy innocent in a way because this kid is involved in torture. Right. It makes it in the French one, it leaves it up to interpretation, whether the children knew what was going on or not. And it was yeah, possible we never find out that she came in and just murdered these kids for no reason. Right. In the American version, it's very clear that the son at least knows what's going on. And yeah. so then you're like, all right, well, these people deserve to die then, you know, I mean, they don't. But <laughs> when you're watching a horror movie, you're like, oh, these are the bad guys. Oh, okay, I got it. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many things to say. But from there, the movies kind of diverge a little bit. Mm -hmm. But we have Lucy fighting her monster and kind of the revelation to the viewer, which I think Anna already knew, that the monster is not real, that it's in Lucy's head. Do you think Anna knew that? I don't know, because they've been, you know, they've been dealing with it for decades. I guess. I don't know. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think I think I agree with you that Anna, if she didn't outright know, she definitely believed yeah, that it was, was Lucy harming herself. Yeah. And then we we find as the viewer, we find there is no actual physical monster. It's very different from movies like His House or the curse even, where there's like a question of, is this in somebody's head or is there mm -hmm. an actual being attacking them, you know, spiritual being? And we find out in both the versions of Martyrs that Lucy is self-harming, but she's doing it because she is seeing something. She's hallucinating yes. something. And this monster 
In the French version, it is really played up. It is horrifying. It's it's a naked woman, first of all, which is totally disallowed in the American version. Right. Not sexualized in any way. No, just, not at it all. It is just a nude person. All cut to pieces and just... And super emaciated. Yeah. CGI, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Because this is not physically possible. Well, especially with all the, like, yeah, contortion. contortion. Yeah. You know, everything crawling around on her back and, and stuff. And it's really... I mean, it's like whatever else you've seen in... I don't know what movies have those, but, you know, creepy haunted house movies. Like, they really play it up and mm -hmm. it feels like that. And you're like, ooh, is this... What we're watching is this a scary movie about a monster chasing these girls. There's even a point, more so in the French version, where I was like, wait, is there another person in this house? Like, is, right. do they have do they have another prisoner who is now free and is attacking her because there's some sort of like Stockholm syndrome something, yeah. you know, like this other prisoner is mad that she killed her, the captors. <laughs> like, I really thought there was an actual actual person there and then it was a monster and then it was oh no there's nothing there's there at no all monster yeah so then we go through that and then the men and women in black show up and we find out what's really going on yeah which is this whole like culty it's definitely a cult gross science experiment sort it's of some thing Nazi happening stuff it's, for it's, sure it's religious but anti-religious it's they have this whole idea. Okay, in the French version, I think it's religious but anti-religious. In the Americanized <laughs> version, it was very, like, these yeah. are Catholics, yeah, basically. Yeah, it was just religious. They put her on a cross at the end. Yeah. But Maybe not Catholics. Christians, for sure. The cult has this idea that if you hurt someone enough and take them right to the brink of death, but don't quite let them die that they can look into the afterlife and have a, maybe a chance to tell you what's there before they die. Right. So they have this belief that that there's these all these images of people who suffered terribly and then before they died, they kept saying, and they were still alive and they were still alive. <laughs> I'm like, mm, okay, guys, <laughs> take a chill pill. But before they died... I think the idea was that it looked like they were see they were looking to something else and that they kept pointing out the eyes and I'm like yeah they just look like they've been suffering horribly yeah they don't look happy I think the idea though was that they had been suffering and if there wasn't necessarily a sense of peace at least they were disconnected disassociated from the suffering yeah. and that they were that they looked like they were looking at something that wasn't there yeah and so they wanted to find just the right person who could withstand the torture and the suffering and the pain long enough to have that observation and still come back and tell them about it. And so that's where the name Martyrs comes from. It wasn't about like people dying for their beliefs, which is the more common definition. Yeah. It was going back to like the original like root of the word martyrs, I guess it's Greek something, I forget. Yeah. That has to do with the word witness. So it was about they wanted someone to witness the afterlife and then come tell them about it. And then here's a real end point spoiler, but in both movies, something happens that later on I thought, and I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. In both movies, someone who hears what the victim has to say dies by suicide immediately it's like the thing that they say is so terrible that they can't handle it so they die but it's not because they're literally telling them what will happen when you die and yeah. then they go and immediately die yeah so it seems like it sounds really good and they're like oh let me get in on that maybe but it definitely doesn't give that impression no it doesn't it's weird yeah. Like, they're not avoiding whatever she's telling them by doing this, so... I mean, maybe they are somehow? Maybe she's like, unless it's suicide, <laughs> this happens. And they're like, oh, I gotta get out on that. <laughs> That's an interesting point. Because at the end of the second one, I mean, I had this thought after both of them, but at the end of the second one, I definitely was like, okay, I don't understand what that was supposed to say. Like, was it fear? Was it guilt? Was it rushing to get there? 
Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. And was it being driven mad by the unknowable thing that it's they've probably been more like told? That. Kind of, it's Lovecraft, Sully. Uh. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's very selfish because they hear it and they want to make sure no one else hears it. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's something people aren't meant to know and they are making sure no one gets to hear it. Uh, in neither version <laughs> did the people in black feel like the kind of people who were going to selflessly do anything. That's true. <laughs> so now a major difference between them. Oh, we almost have to go all the way back to the beginning to discuss this major difference. Because in the French version, Anna is the one suffering and becoming this like super martyr person that they were looking for. And in the American Ugh. version, Lucy is the one. Which is and, a good thing. But then Anna tries to save Lucy and then also manages to do... To, yeah. Like they're she both can, being tortured. Well, there was a thing at the end of the American version, as Anna's like running through the compound trying to get to Lucy, killing everybody in her path. Mm-hmm. Every time she fights a different person, she gets injured kind of badly. Mm -hmm. And so she's getting more and more injured. And I'm like, ooh, you know, maybe Lucy's a failure and she's going to take so much damage through the mm -hmm. course of this that she's really the one. Like, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And she did sort of collapse at the end, but I, I don't mean, know. No, but at the end, she definitely saw the thing that Lucy yes, saw. They rode on a cloud together. Yes. How they decided to do the second half of this, these movies speaks strongly to uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. You are so right. Something about the differences in the cultures of French and American, how they live their lives. Well, there is especially uh, the end of the American version gets real American where we've got a one-liner and uh, shooting the bad guy <laughs> yes. in the face. Oh, yeah, she, uh, Anna goes, like, st straight up die hard and is like, <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Yeah. Um, no, but more so, and again, like, okay, so I, like I said, we have to go all the way back to the beginning. Or maybe the middle. I don't know. This movie starts over, like, five times. Where it's, like, five different vignettes. <laughs> that was my note that i had to underline for the french version i'm like the situation in this movie is constantly changing I'm yes always on my toes like okay now we're in this kind of story and yeah. this is happening and it was really like up until the last 40 minutes which were just quiet torture uh -huh. it was this ever-changing mystery and it was really really interesting yeah it, it was it was several different movies mm -hmm. all you know, one after the other. And it all made sense, though. Eventually. That it would go from one to the next. So that's another point. Oh, my God, there's so many things. Okay. There's so many. So that one is a shorter point. That point is the French version was super willing to let you be absolutely confused and have no idea what was going on for most of the movie. Yeah, they were like, you'll, work it you'll out. be fine. You'll figure it out. Just keep watching. <laughs> Don't turn away. No, no. You have to keep watching us beat this girl up. The American version was everything was much smoother and more tied together and more hints and more like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Don't get confused. Don't here. Here's a little bit of information. Don't leave. Don't leave. Yeah. Don't don't leave. <laughs> We're not going to scare you off with any torture or skinning. I mean, it was so much more desperate. Okay. Yeah. But going back to the characters, Lucy and Anna are totally different people in these two movies yes but it's it's not subtle so much but it's not like you have to think about it it's about pieces of them that you have to put together on your own rather than things that you either movie tells you about them if that makes sense hmm. in the french movie from the very beginning anna is all about taking care of lucy yep. and is obsessed with her basically Lucy is super broken, and Anna is just like, yes, I will take care of you, my broken friend. Yes, Anna is tough, and Lucy is feral. 
Yes. And in, in the French version, Anna is very much the thinker of the group. Like, mm-hmm. like because Lucy is so feral, she just purely acts on instinct and lizard brain. And Anna comes in and cleans up her messes over yes. and over and over again. And that set up the end where, like, they were like, we finally found the person who's strong enough mm-hmm. to go through all of this pain and still be able to be our witness, right? I totally bought that Anna would be the person who yep. would survive and give them what they wanted. And she didn't just, like, see it and say something like it was in the American movie. <laughs> they were like, she was watch- she was witnessing for, like, two and a half hours, and then she came back. Like, yeah. it was a long thing for her. It wasn't just a few minutes and then she died. In the American version, Lucy is very much the thinker. She's still feral, but not... As feral? Nah, she's just a teenager. I mean, she's very she's very traumatized. She's very like emotionally broken. But yeah, she's it's not the same no, it's as really in the not. other one. And then Anna is just like a piece of white toast. Like she is a wet bucket of toast. Yes. Like I was so disappointed in her. I'm like, she's not she's not the thinker. She's just a follower in this movie like she's just following around cleaning up messes because she doesn't have a backbone or a spine like yeah ugh. and so then when she was supposedly someone who could withstand all this pain and be a witness i was like nah well and they kind of didn't in the american version it was about lucy they yes. kind of threw they they literally threw away anna they were like nah, we don't need that yeah and I think that, again, is like this very American thing. Like, Lucy had to be the one because the story we crave as Americans is that lifting yourself up by your bootstraps story. Oh, yes. Let's do that. Where she had to be tortured and then save herself. I'm like, no, no. Yeah. No. Except Anna also got to do Die Hard. Right. And which is, you know, the other thing. And, you know, there was this whole like buddy system thing going on too, which, you know, friendship and loyalty is a big deal mm-hmm. in American culture, which, I mean, I say that as if I don't believe in friendship, but <laughs> it's not authentic. Really felt like it was love mm-hmm. from Anna in the French version. And it felt like it was just. She didn't know that she deserved anything better in the American version. I don't know. Like, I couldn't figure out why she was willing to keep doing the things that she was doing for Lucy. Yeah, I don't know. Whereas the French version, there was no question why Anna was doing what she was doing. Because, first of all, she was doing it to take care of this person she loved so deeply. And then she was doing it out of pure spite and rage because they (laughs) killed the person she loved so deeply. Like Lucy dies in the French version about halfway through. Yeah. Which is very not the American version. No. Anna never had a chance to say to Lucy, you were right. They were the people who tortured you. She finds out too late. Yeah. So like Lucy dies thinking that Anna didn't believe her, which she didn't. (laughs) Yeah. At the time. But like never, there's no, there's never any, redemption or resolution to things it's just like well that was terrible and now she's dead (laughs) and the american version cannot like you cannot leave things that way american audiences do not tolerate that kind of stuff i i was thinking about that and i will say it's not quite that simple it's not the countries it's hollywood not america because it's this movie is like like there's plenty of deep, crunchy, horrifying, hardcore indie movies made by Americans. That's, it goes real dark in America. Yes. But it doesn't go out to the mass market. And this was very much a Hollywoodized, made for the masses kind of let's water it down. We get a bunch of notes from the studio. We're going to make sure nobody's too upset about anything. Yeah. And I don't know if this French one was for mass market in france or if it was just like a you know we're doing some kind of special you know film festival or something yeah i did see in some comments on like imdb or somewhere where people were like why are we getting these like really really horrific movies out of france every year like (laughs) is france okay (laughs) yeah 
<laughs> so maybe they do. Maybe <laughs> they put it out in the mass market. I don't know. Um, but I, I, it was they were talking about like film festivals and oh, stuff. Yeah. So I again, I don't know if it was like big name film festivals or niche film festivals, which you know I'm sure would make a big difference. But I just I do think that there's like well, it's like we talked about way back, you know, twenty years ago when we went on our trip to La Paz. Right. You know, it was one of our like first as a couple going out of the country to a place where we didn't speak the language. Well, I didn't speak any Spanish at that point. You spoke Un poquito. Enough that we weren't gonna like die. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But like we felt like we were, you know, doing something special. And then we get to this city and we realize like it was a tourist city for Mexican tourists to go to. It, you know, it had like all the food and the little shops and the beach and all of that. Yeah. But even as that, like we were walking down the street one day and there was a hole like four feet across in the sidewalk. Like, just in the middle of the sidewalk, and there was, like, a single orange cone yeah. being like, hey, look out. <laughs> Whereas they would have blocked off the entire street in America so that yeah. nobody would accidentally fall in this hole and then sue everybody. And in Mexico, they were just like, don't fall in the hole. If you fall in the hole, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is evolution. And we came up with this whole theory about the deep end and the kiddie pool and, like how much risk people are willing to Mm -hmm. deal with on a daily basis and how much like the culture allows them to deal with. Yeah. And litigation, it it plays a part in that. Yes. And in America, like everything is the kiddie pool, like literally everything is the kiddie pool. Okay. I want to clarify everything for people like us with the amount of privilege that we have. Sure. Is the kiddie pool. Like we you and I have never moved through the world without, like, our water wings on. Yeah, and bumpers in the lanes. Right. And someone, you know, standing over us ready to, you know, grab us up if we, <laughs> you know, inhale a little bit of water or whatever. Like, it's so protected all the time. You know, the average privileged person doesn't get that in all these other countries. Yeah. I'm sure there are some where they do, but I think America is probably the shallowest <laughs> swimming pool in the in the, the world shallow end of the gene pool <laughs> but these two movies definitely like made that point very strongly yeah the french is... movie throws you way in the deep end not so much the american one the french one poses a challenge to the viewer <laughs> and that's sort of a thing with it is like obviously i've said that it's like a half hour of just torture at the end mm-hmm And they're doing something story-wise with that. Like, you sit through all that so that you're on this journey, too, and you're having these feelings, and it's very painful for you. And that that does something, but it's not worth doing. They could have replaced that entire thing with, like, a montage, of a two-minute montage of all the torture she's going through or whatever. And, you know, I'd get it. I mean, it wouldn't have done the same thing. It would not have had the impact. It's like how they let that slow build happen for the family on the Sunday morning. I I was okay with that. (laughs) I know. But my point is, like, they really let you settle in and be a part of that before trying to use those emotions for anything. And they did the same thing with the torture scenes. They were like, no, we're going to actually torture you. We're going to Mm -hmm. make you feel something for a long time. Very long time. Like, we want you to be uncomfortable. (laughs) And they were not afraid to let that go on for an extended period of time. Whereas I think even in movies out of America like Saw and, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever other like hardcore torture porn movies we make it's all flashes and bits and you know nothing too too extended it might be the whole movie doing it but you don't have to look at it for the whole time there's this one did not flinch away from it it was just straight on you're watching the room where this happens yeah and it's not even like there's nothing inventive or wacky or saw about Mm -hmm. it it's almost entirely just the guy comes in and starts hitting her. And that's it. <laughs> and it's But it's interspersed with the woman coming down and like 
forcing her yes, to eat the terrible feeding gruel, scenes were horrible or um you know her just being there alone in the dark chained up for a long time yes key difference between the movies that i noted was like she was completely alone in the french movie and in the american one there were like four or five of them down there or we don't know but several and it was like it's not very alone it's like some being in prison you're talking because, through the walls to people because we're so afraid of being alone with our own thoughts <laughs> that they couldn't even torture her with that, that. was too much torture <laughs> for us <laughs> yeah i i i agree with you that i don't know that it's necessary to have done what the french movie did however they told the story they were trying to tell in a way that the American movie did not manage oh, to tell. Oh, I totally agree with that. But but I is don't it a know story that, that needed to be told? N well, I'm okay even with the story they're telling. Just that I bet they could have done it without that. You know, stretch out all the intrigue at the beginning, cut the torture short, have the finale. I mean, I definitely don't think it would have the impact that it does. But I'm not sure that impact is needed. I agree with you. I'm not sure it's needed. I think, though, that that was what they were trying to do. And I don't yeah. think you could have that same impact without doing it the way that they did it. So then the question is, should you be trying to have that impact? <laughs> well, and that was... For me, that's the question. That was the, the last note I had on that movie was that the last 40 minutes feel like a waste of time because of how it ends like mm. it's like a shaggy dog story mm -hmm. like you're gonna sit through this over mm -hmm. and over torture forever and then what are we getting out of it yeah she's she whispers some words mm -hmm. and the lady shoots herself mm -hmm. it's like that wasn't worth it <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah I, I have to agree with that but this was definitely outside of my realm of what kind of movie i enjoy watching yeah so yeah i don't know i'm really torn because when i write those are the <laughs> kinds of stories i want to write like they tapped into that french version tapped into emotions mm -hmm. like very few of the movies we've watched this month have done i would say goodbye mommy is the only other one that might have <laughs> tapped into something quite as visceral and it was for the same reason it was so visceral yeah and that one, that felt more deserved. Like, the torture was much shorter. Yeah. And it was a part of this whole question yeah. that was going on and then resolved with a good ending. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I can relate to the desire to engage with those emotions in your audience. Yeah. But then, having been the audience, which is why <laughs> I tend to always, I pull my punches when I write stuff like that. Because I'm like, well, I could go to here, but then... Why would I and who would want to watch yeah. that? And do I really want the people who want that as my audience? That's I don't what I'm think afraid of. Who is watching this movie and going, this is the best part? Yes. Which I don't think was the point. It's not like in Revenge where I feel like the point of that movie was watching this woman be tortured and that that was what you were supposed to enjoy. Yes. Right? Like, I did not feel watching this movie that I was supposed to be enjoying what was happening to Anna or mm -hmm. Anna or Lucy, even in the American version. Like, I really don't feel like they were torture porn in that sense. Hmm. And I know, like, we have briefly talked about this already. Like, in the reviews that I was reading, they were kind of evenly divided between people who gave them really high reviews and were like, no, it's not torture porn. It's exploring, you know, all this depth and meaning and whatever. And then other people who are like, it's just like torture porn. It's like Saw, only worse, and giving it really low reviews. Yeah. And I think I agree with the people who don't think it's just straight up torture porn. I think there was something more to it. Yeah. I mean, I agree with that as a whole movie. I think there's a lot more going on here, especially since a large part of it is... Mm -hmm. movie as opposed to torture mm -hmm. but the torture part itself is like why yeah. do we have to watch all this and i know it it multiplies the impact but yeah it's not good a little piece of trivia from the movie was that the actress who played anna broke three bones filming this movie and both of the actresses mm -hmm. said they would never work with this director again and that is where it's like 
okay, I think this is not the right kind of thing then, you know? Like, there's something bad going on here. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That is a good point. Which then makes me wonder, like, okay, well, I didn't look into enough about who directed it and wrote it and blah, 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 blah. But, like, is that a directorial issue or is that a story issue or, you know, yeah. whatever. But anytime an actress says, I will never work with a director again, that is a huge red flag for me. Yeah. For it makes sure. sense. For sure. But, you know, it, it speaks to where you were saying, they're saying, oh, this is important. They're bringing up these emotions and stuff. And I could totally see the director doing that, being like, no, but it it's so, he, he has a he has a cigarette and a beret. And he's like, no, but you see, it is for the art. Let me punch you in the face again. Yeah. Yeah. And then that makes me wonder, like, okay, is that because the director has some deep-seated need to beat up on his actresses, which I think a lot of male directors, especially in horror, yeah. have? Or is that coming from the story? Like, where where does that come from? You know? And yeah. is it coming from the culture that would allow a story like that to be written? And then, like, there's yeah. so many layers. Oh, it reminds me of a line from the French version where they – they said, of course, young women are the ideal martyrs. And they're like, yes, yeah. we're going to make sure those are the people we're going to torture. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to say this was a, a, a feminist movie in any <laughs> way, shape, or form. Like, I no. do not want to suggest that. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think the place where I'm like, maybe there's some value, minimal, that I don't know is entirely justified, is... That exploration of, you know, deeper, darker human emotions. And that's the other thing about the French version. The original was written by someone who was experiencing a a massive depressive episode. Like that's he says that like it came Mm. it comes from this like hugely depressive place in his life where so then he is trying to dig out all of these really dark gross pussy feelings of why am I alive? You know, what do I deserve? Blah, blah, blah. Now the fact that he felt the need to then put those on (laughs) female characters instead of male characters. It's interesting. Is an interesting choice. Mm -hmm. And I did think about that during one of them. I can't remember if it was the French one or the American one, but I did have the, the question of like, how would this movie feel different if this was a male character going through exactly the same thing, because there was nothing inherently female about it. No, not at all. It could have been literally anyone. In fact, the pictures that they showed were like people from all over the world, lots of different cultures, people who had been tortured, people who had had cancer. Like it wasn't even that you had to suffer through torture. It was just that they were like, well, this is the way we can make sure that you're suffering. So I don't know. I I think it could have been almost exactly the same and removed some of that we like to see scantily clad, bruised yeah. women piece. For sure. Yeah. Ratings. So I think I've made it fairly clear already that I have an appreciation for the French version. I'm not sure that I feel good about that appreciation. <laughs> I appreciate it in much the sense that I appreciated House of a Thousand Corpses. It was much too violent, much too everything for me. (laughs) I don't want to watch it again. And I would be very careful about who I recommended this movie to. Yeah. That being said, I think it accomplished what it was trying to do. And I think it did it in a way that impresses me. And again, I don't know that I feel good about it, but I'm impressed by it. So I'm going to give... The French version, four head staples out of five. The American version, I was much less impressed with. Yeah. I feel like perhaps it suffers from the fact that it came second, and I knew what was going on. Yeah, I think so. But also, it suffers from being a Hollywood movie, I think. It took all the edges that the French movie had and, like, sanded them down so that no one would get hurt hitting their heads on them. You know, it was yeah. just so, so kitty pool. So I am going to give the American version two and a half 
drain pipes out of five. It just, yeah. it took all the interesting parts that made it worth, maybe worth having watched the French version and got rid of them. And so then it was just there. I, it wasn't that interesting to me. Plus yeah. it was just all like, now it's just Christianity and blah, whatever. <laughs> Not original yes. enough. Well, you kind of stole my thunder by using the exact numbers I was going to hmm. use. So I don't have to say my numbers because they're your numbers. I just want to say the French version, until the torture starts, I would give a five, maybe a five plus two. Mm, it yeah. was awesome. Yeah. And then it was just relentless torture after that. Yeah. So that's very sad. The American version, no problem giving that one a two and a half all the way through. <laughs> At so, least it was yeah. consistently a two and a half. <laughs> yes. It didn't have any troubles with it, with any dips. Yeah. Now, that's one where if you want something that feels American edgy, <laughs> that would be a movie to watch. Like, if Maybe. you want to watch one where you're like, ooh, I watch scary movies, <laughs> go for it. Go for but it. But just know, it's not that scary. <laughs> no, it's not. It's really not. It's a little like Die Hard. It's, it's uh, Diet Coke. Okay, so next up on our list, what is MovieBot presenting us with? Well, this is super fun for us. You know how twins are born at the same time, because that's how twins work? Yes. Our movie for tomorrow is La Llorona from 2019. Okay. And the evil twin is The Curse of La Llorona from 2019. Ooh. Should be pretty good. Okay. But these movies don't have anything to do with each other, right? I mean, they're about the same thing, but well, that's I mean. All. Yeah, but they're, like, done by completely separate people. They're not, like, sequels or yeah. remakes. That would be weird to have a remake come out. I think there year. might even be a third movie of someone else doing a La Llorona story. I do think the La Llorona story became kind of popular in the last few years. Yeah. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. All right. Well, we'll be back tomorrow to talk about that. In the meantime, if you watched the French version of Martyrs, like, please... Check in. Do something good for your brain. Like, watch some My Little Ponies or something. Yeah, that should be good. <laughs> All right, see ya. Bye. I find that amusing. I find okay. it offensive. <laughs> <laughs> he did not like that. <laughs>